Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. And today, I, <laughs> today I am super excited because it is a very different video than what I normally do. And so we actually drove eight hours south and we are outside of New Paris, Indiana today. And I have been working with Smokercraft for a couple years now. So they invited me down to come experience their annual photo shoot. So today we are checking out the new boats that Smokercraft is coming out with in the next year, 2023. We're gonna check out the factory, which will be in the afternoon a little later. I'm super excited to be here and we're gonna get to it. Let's get going. So you guys are used to seeing me out of a Smokercraft. But for those of you who don't know, StarCraft and Smokercraft are under the same family company. So I'm going to be out of a StarCraft today and Smokercraft maybe later on. They're also going to be doing some pontoon boat filming. So let's get in the boat. Two, this is more of a trolling boat. We were in a multi-species boat before, so let's get going. All right, so I started off in the StarCraft and then I got to experience a deeper trolling boat. And now I'm in something that I'm a little bit more comfortable with. I've fished in it before and that is the boat that I use, the 188 Smokercraft Adventurer, except this one is a little bit different. And so I've got Mike here, he's gonna Tell us the details about what's different about the boat that's going to be coming out next year. I believe it's mostly the dash. So new for 2023, uh, we've got new uh, composite dash uh, setups. So we've got uh, some grab rails here on the passenger console. We've got a power port on the on the passenger side for charging phones, a uh, very deep glove box, a uh, small tray there to put some extra accessories, hats, that kind of stuff. And then uh, on this side this year, we've switched to a uh, C-Zone 12. So this will basically be the control center for everything on the dash, controls your bilge pumps. You can set your timers uh, length for your aerators. You can set your nav light time on and off. And then everything can be controlled by a touchscreen unit like the Solix 10 that we're using. The other nice thing is that the way we've changed the dash height thing and everything is that this gauge pod comes standard. And then the, then the dealer has the option to remove the gauge pod and you can put a 16 inch graph in the center in the front and you can put a 10 inch off to the side. So this very much excites me because I will have more space on the dash to put my graphs. I normally I mount one off to the side right now using the uh, IGTS uh, track system. So super excited about that feature. Now, let's go for a rip in this boat. Well, that is a wrap for here on the lake. I had a great time driving around in all the different Smoker Craft family boats. And so uh, we're gonna go eat and then tour the factory. And yeah, that's our plan for the day. All right, so we are finally here where all of the magic happens. We are at the only factory for the Smokercraft family. And I've got a very special guest with me, uh, Phil Smoker, fifth generation, working with the company. He's vice president of sales. And uh, I am super excited to walk through. Phil's gonna show me around for a little while and then we're gonna go with someone else. Uh, so what's the deal, Phil? Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, we've, um, we've been around for a long time. Oh yeah, so. definitely. 
Well, we started off as a, a lumber company back in 1921, and uh, from that time we got into oars and paddles, and even a brief stint in RVs, and eventually in boats, and then and since the early 60s I've been building boats. So we'll go take a look around and check things out. All right, let's get going. Glasses on for safety. So what does this space do? So in this space, they're, they're taking drawings and plans and actually putting them into the, the product so that um, the parts, the pieces all come up in a bill of materials so that they can get it out to the line, get it out to uh, purchasing and get the parts in and actually put the boats together. All right, so this is literally where it starts off. This is a roll of aluminum and I'm here with Jim Ellis who is on his first day of his 48th year working for Smokercraft and he's going to tell me how this roll of aluminum turns into a boat. Yes, yeah, so this particular machine is our decoiler. It's the largest decoiler in all of aluminum manufacturing. What happens here is we put on our aluminum coil. It is run by a set of rollers into a shear that will shear it to the length of whatever blank we need to make a part out of. my sweater off so I wasn't sweating and dying of heat. Let's go this way. So back in this room, this is our rib room. So in the bow of all of our aluminum boats, we have a air structure, a structure of ribs that give extra strength in the bow which, so that when you're going through rough water, the bow taking punishment won't, won't be damaged. So all three of these actually decoil aluminum that is the width of the rib and then forms it into the rib shape, stamps it, drills it, and cuts it and stacks it. So this is our wood shop, uh -huh. and as you can tell by looking at the side of that building, this used to all be outside. So there are 31 buildings, approximately 32 on the complex. Yep. Many of those have been roofed in between now, uh, but this, when I started here, this was all outside. Now it's become our wood shop, and we went from having uh, everything cut by hand and using hand tools, so you can see, yeah, you can see a number of CNC routers now that cut all of our materials. Beside you, we've got the materials for our floors, like there, here, here's your casting platform decks, all made out of pressure-treated plywood, lifetime warranty against rotting and warping. This will be maybe, I don't know, maybe it'll be cup holders, I'm not sure what that part will be at the end, but those are all cut in here. Okay, we're in the upholstery building and this uh -huh. is where a lot of the parts that we saw cut out of aluminum on the CNC routers yeah. or possibly a wooden part cut out here in the wood shop come in here to be covered with either a vinyl yeah. or carpet or a carpet. Okay, so Avery, we're in the production area now. Yeah. Uh, we have two sections of this building, the section here on your left yeah. is uh, the Gen 1 line of products, so the halls are built up on the east side of the room and then they come down through the center section to be finished to go into the paint shop. Over here to the west side, this is where the Gen 2 boats are built, which you, you I believe, have a 188 Adventure, so it would yeah. be built on this line. All starts with a uh, one-piece bottom. Here you can see the piece that's put inside there is to hold up the gas tank so it's off of the bottom of the boat. This will be a 17-foot excursion model, which is the baby to uh, the adventure. This is what the bottom of the inside of the boat looks like. So the stringer system is built outside of the boat, and you can see some stacked against the wall over there. And then they're welded in. They're all welded in a jig over in a different building, brought over here, placed into the boat, both riveted and maybe tack welded into the bottom itself. Uh, this process is completely different than the process that you would see in the Gen 1 line. So uh, we wanted to come over here because this is the boat that you drive and see how it's built. Uh, you can see our side panels over here. They came off of the big decoiler that we looked at earlier. Lap straight lines were put in them for extra strength yeah. in the side. So Avery, the side panels will be attached here. Yeah. And then it, the boat will be flipped over and put into a jig over there where they will begin to put the top rail on. On the IGTS top rail that you have on your boat. So they marked off right where here. the rail's going to be, yeah. where they're going to rivet it, and you can see the seams have all been uh, riveted now. 
the double seam, yes. double seam of rivets, which uh, some of our competitors only have one row of rivets, where we have two. Make it extra strong. Extra strong, less likely to leak. And there's the ribs you saw made over in the rib room or in the bow. This is a great view of this particular boat. This is our VPS hull. You can see here the VPS power strike that is on the bottom of the boat, beginning here and angling toward the bow. This gives you a lot of uh, quick lift and gets the bow down a lot quicker than uh, an ordinary complete V-bottom boat. We also see here that, that not only are these uh, keels on each side of the center keel, but they're also lifting straight. So this provides for extra lift. Again, gets the boat out of the water quickly and also gets it on plane. Also see the built-in reverse chine. So we've got a line here, a bend, so that the chine at the chine line on the outside will bend down. This again cups the water, gets you up and on plane much faster. That's cool. This is our test tank. Every uh, production line has its own test tank. We test every hull to make sure that it doesn't leak. Every boat, right? Every, every boat. boat. You test it in this. That's so crazy. Now they're putting in a lot of the interior structure yep. for your bow casting platform, your rear casting platform, as well as your side side rod boxes. Yes. The gas tank has also been put in at this point. That's a big gas tank. No wonder it takes so long to fill. <laughs> Back here we can see our transom, which is a pressure-treated plywood piece, multiple layers you can see. This is uh, guaranteed for a lifetime not to rot or warp. Some of our competitors use uh, a composite material or just aluminum. We feel that this has more screw retention. This is a lot stronger than a composite. Also, on the back side of this, we have an ABS layer of plastic that goes between the aluminum and the wood itself to protect against any corrosion. It's this black That is that plastic. black piece yeah. right there. And then on the inside of the boat, we sandwich with a piece of aluminum so that the transom board itself is completely encapsulated in aluminum or plastic. So in this station, Avery, we're going to put the level foam flotation in the boat. Uh -huh. uh, to do that, they put a template on the floor that you can see has different pilot holes drilled in it. Yep. And they take the machine beside you on your right and they, they use a tube to go down under the floor. They put the liquid foam in and they allow it to sit in there until you can see that it comes out the top and then they'll cut it off. At that point, they know all the cavity underneath the floor is full and they'll take out these templates and, and put, put the, the real floor then they'll put the finished floor in its place yes so we we started using c zone a couple years ago on our tiller models which this will become a tiller and we're starting to expand into our bigger models like the 178 and 188 adventure uh, which you saw today probably when you're out on the water yep. but this is the brains to the whole piece so all the digital switching uh, is on one panel that's in the that's stored in the back of the boat. It's all waterproof. It can easily be expanded if you need another circuit somewhere else in the boat to run another pump or what, whatever the case might be. Now it's starting to look like a real boat. It is, yeah. As you pointed out earlier, this is where they put in the finished floor. Uh -huh. um, and they start to put in all your lids to, to your port side rod storage or your storage on your starboard side. This is gonna end up being a tiller. Yep. So it will have, uh, the tiller console will be mounted right there in that corner. Um, of course, you've got your center rod storage and all your storage in the, in the front. This will be a pro model. So you'll be able to put your plain old tackle trays in the pro storage area here. Yep. And the, again, your live well in the back. It's a and, big and back you can see over there is where your uh, C-Zone brains are mounted. So here we're in the paint shop. This is the, the area where they mask off anything that isn't going to get painted. Uh, they'll clean up any area that needs to be cleaned up before it goes into uh, the spray booth to get the zinc chromate primer put on the boat. Is that the primer? That's the primer, that yellow color. That's cool. It looks like chartreuse. <laughs> Shout out to Clayton Schick. If it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. 
Okay, so once the boats are prepared for paint, they'll go into this particular paint booth where they paint the zinc chromate primer on the boat. They'll bring them out, let them set, and then they'll move over to this booth where uh, the urethane paint is painted on. This is where they put the base color paint on the boat. Once the base color paint is put on the boat, they'll bring it out, let it sit to flash off yep. to allow the, the paint to kind of run How together. How long does that take? Uh, it might take 10 minutes maybe. Oh, so it's not that long. No, it's not, it's not a long time, but it lets it a little pre-harden. And then we've got a huge gas oven here behind us. Yeah. So the boat, every boat will pass through this gas oven where that paint will be baked onto the boat. So it sets the color? So it kind of sets the color. Yeah, so you've got your zinc chromate primer which etches into the aluminum. The urethane attaches itself to that primer. Then it gets baked on here. So it stays in here about 30 minutes at about 180 degrees. Wow. Yeah. The people that work in here use different patterns to mask off the stripe shape. Yep. And at that point, it goes into this paint booth where the color paint will go for the color stripe. The boats will be put in here. You can see kind of that center stripe line. Yep. They'll be stacked in there, and this bank of lights will slowly move over the top of the boat, baking the, 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 the color. Stripe. Yeah, the stripe color in. So basically, the boat is a, a double-baked boat. The paint finish is very hard. It's like a double-baked potato, the best you can get. So you can see the gentlemen over here are putting on, starting to put on all the pieces that were not put on in the other side of the production on the other side of the paint shop. Yeah. So you're seeing them working on putting different lids, if there's consoles to put in the boat or console tops or the windshield, it will all be put on down here as well as all the graphics for so the So it's like the finishing touches then. All the finishing touches, yes, and the final inspections. Some of the inspections are done on the line. Gas tanks is, is inspected for first time up there. Yeah. Uh, back on the other side of the paint shop, it'll be re-inspected here along with a number of other things that, that, that the inspectors go through. So once they're done here, they've been inspected. They come to the end of the building where they're shrink wrapped. They're taken out to the storage area and then taken into the pre-rig department where they're rigged and, and made ready for a load. And then that load goes off to our local dealer. And that, pretty much wraps her up. What do you think? I think that's pretty awesome that you start from like scratch of aluminum parts and then it becomes a boat. That is so cool. Yeah. Okay, so we are officially at the end of the line. That concludes our tour of the factory. It's something I've always wanted to know how these boats are pretty much made from scratch to uh, where we pick them up at the dealer. And uh, it was a pretty awesome experience seeing this for the first time. Smoker Craft is an awesome company. I've been so fortunate to be working with them the past couple years and they make awesome boats. I hope you guys enjoyed this tour and if you're in the market I highly suggest you head over to your local dealer and pick up a smoker craft or a star craft or any boat from the smoker craft family because you will not be disappointed. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please click the big red subscribe button. And of course, get out in a boat, get fishing.